Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Today, I'm joined by Michael Chuchek and Dr. Nancy Snow. Welcome back. Thanks Thank a lot.、You. We're talking today about women in politics and the emergence recently of three political figures who have kind of not come out of nowhere, but they are prominent Renho Murata, Yuriko Koike, and Tomomi Inada. So, Dr. Snow, of these three, which one kind of captures your imagination? I suppose it would be Renho. I know Koike is getting a lot of attention internationally, but Renho intrigues me because, of course, she's trying to revitalize the DPJ、right. and use her force of personality, being someone who has the Taiwanese、uh, citizenship, doesn't she still? And she goes by the one word Renho.、Right. And she's also very outspoken. She's willing to challenge the LDP. But the question remains, though, Tim, can you use the Force and personality of a woman to really start a new movement around the DPJ. And she's got her work cut out for her. She's coming under scrutiny the way Koike is. Anytime these women are assertive or sort of speaking out of turn, which is not typical here in Japan, they, they become role models, but they also get a lot of pushback. And、uh, I, I would hope that it would encourage other women to try to take on、uh, stronger roles and, and sort of lift their heads up、mm-hmm. and, and take risks.、Uh, because I worry sometimes with all the media coverage that these women have that they are looked at as such an exception. Sure. As opposed to the promise of a rule here in Japanese、right. society. I've said before, Japan can't really survive. Without the full force of gender equality. Right. Well, I think one of the characteristics that she holds、uh, high is that she is a firebrand. I mean,、uh, when the Democratic Party of Japan was in power, she was challenging the, the bureaucrats, you know, what's wrong with being number two? You know, why do we have to spend so much money to be number one? You remember that grilling that she gave to the bureaucrats? Yeah, it's, it's, it's haunted her ever since. Yeah, I, I like Renho very much. I follow her on Twitter.、Uh, and this was long, for a long time. She, I, I used to call her Japan's mom because she, when she also is very much, she's a mother of twins、hmm. and is very involved in their lives.、Mm-hmm. So it's a, a really good mix of career woman and And childbearing, which, which、mm-hmm. you don't see with Koike. Koike, unfortunately, was only briefly married in her 20s and, and later had surgery so that she now cannot bear children. So she has a different image of careerist woman、mm-hmm. uh-huh. entirely. Uh, where, and then we have Inada. And Inada is sort of a, a little bit different from both of them. She she's、sure、not、is. a former television personality,、right. mm-hmm. uh, she's, she's a lawyer, which at the time she was taking the, the law exam was. An extremely elite、uh, group. There's a, something like 3% of, of those taking the bar exam passed it. So, n- someone who's already in a, an elite, and therefore it's not really women as a whole that she represents, but actually the professional class.、Mm-hmm. And she has gotten where she is by being as conservative. As possible,、mm-hmm. which is not the way Koike and not the, definitely not the way that Renho have risen up in right, the world. Right. What we'd like to say is that these three examples portray a growing、uh, groundswell of, of women becoming involved in politics and being involved in, in upper echelons of, of running business. But in fact, that doesn't really necessarily seem to be the case. Well, another dimension here is that we're talking in the same week that we had the first debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And if you look at the transcript of that debate, I believe that Trump interrupted almost 30 times. And Don't you hate it when somebody does that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, Hillary Clinton. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> It, it, she had to,、uh, by the end of the debate, it had, it had just gone completely downhill. It was a reference to Rosie O'Donnell, which is going back to last fall,、mm-hmm. where he was calling her some name. And,、uh, and then she mentions the、uh, former Miss Universe who was called Miss Piggy. She was、right. from Venezuela and she was referred to by Trump as Miss Piggy or Miss Housekeeping. She、mm-hmm. had put on some weight. And so, Women who step into the, the public spotlight around politics, which is all about power and control, and、uh, it, it's very masculine,、um, they're going to get it, even、mm-hmm. if they're at the level of Hillary、it. Clinton.、Right. 
And sometimes I think as a woman that we need to get away from all this talk about, oh, the first woman, because mm -hmm. it, it, it should be just, this is a person who happens to be a woman. This is a person who happens to be somebody who doesn't have children. That should be right. almost an aside. And we should look at their experience. Are they qualified for the job? So I'm not just in favor of, oh, we need more women just filling spaces where men were before. No, we mm -hmm. need more qualified people overall. But I know in Japan what this represents symbolically. It's, it's very big. Having lived here now the last four years off and on, it's, it's like an explosion of women mm -hmm. in politics. But when you look across the board, and Michael would probably know these statistics better than I do, if you look at the diet or if you look at governors of other prefectures, right. the numbers are still abysmal. Sure. So we're still paying a lot of lip service. It's a lot of this rhetorical kind of women's empowerment. And women are not uh, really, really there. And maybe it's the lack of training or it's a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, but perhaps if they weren't just singled out as, oh, you're, you're the woman, you're the token woman, then maybe they would just kind of naturally over time gain experience where it would be the natural next step for them to move up in their careers or in some other venture, a nonprofit starting their own company. I think the women, um, Michael, you could uh, add to this Wait, too. I'm not finished. <laughs> 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 yes, but now you're being bossy. Did well, I say? <laughs> now you're being bossy, and that's wrong. And and th 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 no, there's a clear uh, there. What ha there is a clear issue in terms of numbers, raw numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, in the House of Reps, which had its last election in 2014, the number, the percentage of women is abysmal at nine percent, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit over it, but not much. And that ranks Japan internationally way, way down around the 150s level in terms of proportionality of women inside the national legislature. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the House of Counselors, which just had its election this year, the proportions are much more equal. There, there's a, there's, there are 20% mm -hmm. of the, the seats are now occupied by women. And one should look forward to the next House of Reps election, maybe we'll be having it in January, where we'll have a significant improvement mm -hmm. in in Japan, of course, is we have this problem, of course, of one dominant party so that there's not this chance for people to be out of power, for dynasties to be broken right. down, and for these long-term relationships at, to have be cut off so that there are openings for women to move in. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a, a really slow process. But since I've been here and you have been here, we have seen women move into all kinds of places. And yes, there's always a, it's a first woman kind right. of story. But now when I see women driving trains, mm -hmm. right? That didn't happen until just a few years ago, but right. now it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Does she have to stop and ask for directions? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know that the men getting on board wonder about that. Yeah, no, but that's, that's, that's point taken. <laughs> uh, but the, the, so many barriers are falling and Basically, under Abe, what we've seen is a massive influx of women into all kinds of jobs, basically because of the uh, dearth of new labor. There's mm -hmm. just there's simply openings for them, and eventually that's going to push up into the political world. But Let's hope gonna, so. But it's going to take some time. Sure. Well, uh, it's inescapable that this is a man's world. James Brown said it. Yeah. It's a man's world, and if you're going to play with the guys, you need to fight like the guys, you need to talk like the guys. And the three people that we're talking about now have great um, charisma. They have, they can fight with the guys, but I think they're held to even a different standard now. It's not that you can fight like the guys. I mean, you have to do even more than that to be successful. And you can do it backwards and in heels, as Ginger Rogers said, or if you're Koike, you can do it with heavier makeup than she should have on. <laughs> Right, in reference to what, who was it? Uh, who gave uh, Ishihara, her Shin, time, Shintaro right? Ishihara said that, yeah. But let me tell you, I'm teaching global affairs this fall at Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. To give a shout out to my university, there are 19 women, five young men. They were born in 1998. And what I've noticed, we've just had a few classes, is that the women have this confidence 
that has really surprised me. The the boys are in the back. They're kind of clustered together. Now, maybe I'll get them to, I'll draw them out more. But I wonder if maybe my being a female professor makes a mm-hmm. difference to them. And of course, I'm coming from another country. But I do think there will be this, this wave in the future. Maybe it'll be 10 years, 20 years from now. And, and these are women that I could see a few of them taking on these higher profile roles. And uh, there was a book uh, called The Confidence Code. I, I went to a session at the uh, Japanese embassy, actually, in Washington just a few weeks ago. And uh, Nobuko Sasai, the wife of the Japanese ambassador to the U.S., had a session for women about looking at the difference in confidence. Mm-hmm. And what has happened traditionally, my generation, is that women would not see themselves, say, in Congress or the diet. And men if asked, would say, yeah, that's an option for me. So men just naturally... Aspire to a leadership or a sure, kind of they, commanding position. They wouldn't even think as often about qualification, but it, was, it looked like, as you said, the men's club. Right. So naturally. And women still feel like, I'm not going to be accepted, or mm-hmm. I will speak out of turn and I'll be put down. So you do have to have thick skin. But if the numbers will increase, if those young women I have in the university classroom, if they go out in a larger number, Mm -hmm. it'll become just natural to see that that split. It may not be 50-50, but it should certainly get beyond single digits. Right. Well, I think the trials and tribulations of aspiring to leadership, I mean, it's a hard battle. And probably the, the women who aspire to that, they're getting knocked around maybe a little bit more just because. Yeah, I mean, I hate the thought of ever being in politics. I like to be on the outside. So you you don't necessarily have to run for office. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to aspire to that level. It could be something like speaking out or speaking up more, right. making sure that you can negotiate that first job offer mm-hmm. better. Right. So. Well, in this case, you you bring up the matter of education. The education that at least Denho and... Uh, Koike have had are quite unusual. Koike is a graduate of Cairo University, who, who thus is not part of the normal school here. Ren Ho has, took classes in Beijing. So they had a different background. And certainly with, in the case of uh, Inada Tomo, Tomomi Inada, uh, she has, you know, I mean, she's a lawyer, so she's gone through the law. The education is for women. Mm-hmm. And in this case of these three women, crucial for them getting that crowbar in their hands to break open the door right. so that they can get inside. Mm-hmm. And that, as you say, as it, and I have, I have something similar in some of my classes where there is a, a very gendered d- difference in confidence or expressed confidence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's not the direction one would assume. Mm-hmm. We have to also make sure that we, 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 uh, we do admit that have the part of this narrative that we're talking about fits in with a larger narrative that is very prevalent in Western or non-Japanese media that Japan is a highly sexist society. So that the the rise of these three women is going against the grain. Mm-hmm. That's very attractive for people who are writing, maybe some maybe right. that maybe for their readers or listeners, but it is a narrative. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily a reflection entirely of the situation on the ground here, which is, uh, admittedly, there is a sexism, but it's being transformed so quickly, mm-hmm. at least during the time that, right. that Mr. Langley and I have been here. Well, I think that's what has led to what I would call a feminization of international exchange, of a lot more women going abroad. Sure. Or I've worked with the Tomodachi Initiative the, from the U.S. Embassy, where they, ha- they offer study abroad. And it skews more toward women. Sure. I mean, because for the guys, they have to check out of society exactly. in order to do that. And for the girls, it's probably one of the several options that they have. It's their socialization, in right. fact. Sure. Whereas for the men, it is, it is the contrary direction, right. at least in terms of corporate life. Mm-hmm. So that we're seeing uh, certainly uh, that the parts of society that can be internationalized mm-hmm. are the ones that are being most are most accessible 
for women. In the case of television, the fact that they have to have two, one female anchor and one male right. anchor is always going to make sure that there's a 50-50, right. which no other industry, I think, has an established mm -hmm. rule for. Mm. But the thing that I find so remarkable about these three individuals, and, and the reason why they're focused on our, our episode now, is that the challenges that they are facing or the challenges that they are inviting, for example, with uh, the governor of Tokyo, she's inviting controversy. She's going after it, you know, really with a, a, an incredible amount of vigor and foresight that even a guy in that position would probably be somewhat shy of, of, of challenging. And, and the same is, is true with Renho or with uh, in, Inada, I mean, Minister of Defense. When That's, she doesn't really know very much about defense, at least that we know of. Right. That when we don't know when she became suddenly a policy wonk. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Abe threw her into that position, which is not outside of her bailiwick. Whether she's going to sink or swim, well, we'll have to see. Right, right. I think part of the controversy, though, that invites this groundswell of support. In mm -hmm. the case of Koike, we went to a rally where she spoke right, right before she had her big win. And I looked around in the crowd, and there were some very excited women in that sure. crowd. Mm -hmm. So if you show, look at me taking on the boys' club, mm -hmm. uh, that attracts international attention. But also domestically, it's sort of like when my Japanese female friends say, glad you're here. Yeah. But, but I don't, you know, you don't need more assertive Western women. You need mm -hmm. more... Japanese women saying, hey, I could see myself yep. doing that someday. So she is a trailblazer. But the controversy is that lifting up mm -hmm. of support because she knows there's going to be a pushback. She's in There her, are detractors, yeah. right? You know, and the, the, it's a two-edged sword because what if they fail? So, for example, there are three women in the 20-member cabinet of the Abe administration now. There were at one time five. You remember when that happened? And then two of them immediately fell into scandal and it just it casts a, a pall over you know other women coming in he's got three now uh, things seem to be even keel and well, i was just going to add as far as failure for women maybe it is harder but look at donald trump running again for president i mean he won the nomination he's failed over and over at business and he's risen up again so when men fail repeatedly it's sort of like, well, that was just a bad business deal. Sure. But with women, it's, a different standard. it's almost like, okay, we're giving you this, maybe with Inada, we're giving you this, we're throwing you into the fire and don't blow it. And they have blown it before, but we shouldn't give women that different standard mm -hmm. and say, look, you were, you were so bad, we're not going to have another woman there. The problem is the lack of experience. So sure. often they're just these they can be so easily scapegoated mm -hmm. because they're just not prepared for that and there's no uh, support for right. them. They and feel pretty much and alone. The, the crucible so. that they're in is just surrounded by guys, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's interesting to watch powerful women in Japanese politics beginning to emerge. A lot more is coming down the path. Stay tuned, we're gonna to continue to follow this.